Hey, what's up YouTube, it's me Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new HP NV X360. All right, let's get started. The 15 inch HP NV X360 is a two in one convertible laptop that acts very similar to the Lenovo Yoga line of laptops. You get four convertible modes, the latest Haswell chips, a full HD touchscreen panel, and Beats audio speakers. The pricing retails for $799 US for the Core i5 version, and the Core i7 version retails for $899 US. And for your operating system, we have Microsoft Windows 8.1. The design and build quality of the 15-inch HP NV X360 has been good. On the exterior, you got a silver plastic finish with an HP logo on top, and the bottom also features the same plastic finish. The interior features a brushed aluminum palm rest that looks pretty sleek. You also get a standard full-size keyboard with a 10-key numeric keypad. The weight comes in at 5.29 pounds and measures 0.93 inches thick. There is a little bit of keyboard flex on the new HP NV X360, however, it's nothing to be concerned of. Yes, on video it looks kind of bad, but in person it's not that bad, trust me. The left side of the laptop features your AC power button, exhaust port for your fans, USB 2.0 port, headset microphone jack combo, and your volume down and up button. On the right side, you got your security lock slot, AC charging port, gigabit ethernet port, full-size HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, an SD card reader, and your hard disk status indicator. Hey, what's up YouTube, Andrew here. I'm testing out the webcam quality on the HP Envy X360. Let me know what you guys think. Out of the box, the color calibration was too cool. Once I calibrated, it was much better. For a laptop around this price range, the color accuracy on this panel was adequate. Keep in mind this is the TN panel, so you're going to have very limited viewing angles compared to an IPS panel. And it's also extremely reflective, so those of you that like to work outside or work by bright windows, keep that in mind. Text and image quality were okay. I just wish HP put a better quality pen on here, since HP considered these laptops premium. And here are your Spider 4 Pro colorimeter results. For the Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 77%. And for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 58%. Again, with these kind of scores, you can expect average color reproduction on this panel. I don't know if I had a defective panel, but my unit had weird vertical lines all around the display. Let me try to get a view here. You can't really see it in this video, but if you have the 15-inch X360, let me know in the comments down below if you have a similar issue, and I'll try to investigate further. The X360 features four modes to choose from. The first mode, obviously, is our laptop mode. Next up is our stand mode. This mode will be highly useful for PowerPoint presentations or even watching movies in bed. Followed by our tent mode, which can be great for playing movies and touch-based games. And last but not least is our tablet mode. I find this mode kind of cumbersome because of the size and weight of the laptop. So there you have it. Those are the four multiple modes on the all-new X360. The touchscreen performance on the HP Envy X360 has been good. I have not experienced any issues with the touchscreen panel. Scrolling and multi-touch gestures have been highly responsive. Overall, I had a positive experience with the touchscreen panel. The keyboard on the NVX360 has been good. You get a full-size keyboard with a numeric keypad. I just wish there was a little bit more key travel. With that being said, the longer I had the laptop, the more custom I got with it. For those of you that like to work on projects late at night, you also get a backlight keyboard. The only downside here is there's no multiple brightness settings. The HP Control Zone trackpad was first featured on the HP Spectre line of laptops, and since then, they've made their way all the way down to the HP Envy line of laptops. Yes, it does seem like a good idea to incorporate the charms and multitasking menu into the trackpad. However, sometimes I would find myself activating the charms menu on accident with my palm rest. I just wish HP included an on and off function for the control zone. Now let's test out the control zone in action. To activate the charms menu, you can either swipe to the left or press down. Let's try to press down now. There you go, now you can slide up or down. And that's your charms menu. Now let's activate the multitasking menu. We're going to simply swipe to the left. Or we can press down to activate the multitasking menu. The trackpad performance has been adequate, two finger scrolling has been smooth, but multi touch gestures could have been better. The gestures were just poorly implemented. The processor power on this laptop is the Intel Core i7 4510U clocked at 2 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.1 GHz. The performance has been excellent. From basic productivity to photo and video editing, this dual core i7 was fast and efficient. For the Geekbench 364 bit version, I got a single core score of 3055. And for the multi-core performance, I got a score of 5,978. And for PC Mark 8 Home Conventional, I got a score of 2,368. Next up is the Intel HD 4400. With this integrated graphics card, you can expect to play games like Minecraft, The Sims 3 and 4, Dota 2. Now don't expect to play a demanding game like Battlefield 4, as you will be disappointed. Here are some 3D Mark Advanced Edition scores for the Intel HD 4400. For the Firestar, I got a score of 616. For Skydiver, I got a score of 2,785 followed by Cloudgate with a score of 4,896, and for Ice Storm Extreme, I got a score of 30,977. 
Next up we have a demo of Minecraft running on the Intel HD 4400. Here are the graphics settings I used. Right now I'm averaging anywhere from 55 to 60 frames per second. And as you can see here, it's running very smooth like butter. Let's take a walk out here and see if the frames dip. So far I saw it dip to around 45 to 50 frames per second. Whether you pick the dual core i5 or the dual core i7, both of them feature the Intel HD 4400. And as you can see here, light duty games run fine. The fan noise during regular usage is acceptable. However, fire up a game or intense CPU application and you'll definitely hear that fan roaring. For your storage, you get a 1TB hard drive which is very spacious for all your multimedia files and more. But the downside here is it runs at 5400 RPM. So expect subpar performance when booting up your laptop or launching applications. Battery performance was average. I was able to get anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5 hours out of full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. I just wish HP crammed the bigger battery pack in here. The Beats audio speaker sound quality is about average. The sound levels are adequate, especially for those two bottom facing speakers. Just don't expect to be blown away. And here's a demo of the Beats audio speakers in action. We're going to start at around 50% and go up from there. HP did not make the HP NV line of laptops easily upgradable, but since I have itchy fingers, I'm going to go ahead and dig in here and see what I can find that's user upgradable. To access the internal components, you want to simply remove those 12 Phillips screws on the bottom, and then on the metal edges right here, you want to simply work your way up from there. Okay guys, I got it pried open. Let's see what's under the hood. So far I see a single fan, a motherboard, a small battery pack. Wow, that is actually pretty small for a laptop this size. The RAM is soldered on board, so forget about that one. The only two components you can upgrade on this laptop is your 2.5 inch SATA hard drive and your Intel wireless card. The Intel wireless AC7260 is located on the back right. I've read a couple of reports of people having issues with the Intel AC7260 wireless card on the HP NV line of laptops, but my experience has been the opposite. This wireless card has been working flawlessly without any issues. The dual core i7-4510U is very efficient. On average, the CPU temperatures were around 44 to 47 degrees Celsius, with a high of only 65 degrees Celsius. And that was during a 30 minute session of Minecraft. The HP Envy X360 is a solid choice for many buyers that are not willing to spend too much money. And you can save even more by getting the Core i5 version. You get a fast and efficient dual core processor, 8GB of RAM, multiple modes that will be highly useful for many applications. The downsides are the screen and trackpad. I felt like HP could have put a better quality panel in here. Maybe I had a defective screen, who knows. If any of you guys have weird vertical lines on your panel, please let me know. And for the trackpad, I wish HP gave us more options to either enable or disable the control zone features because it can be frustrating at times when the control zone pops up when you are trying to type. Now for those of you that are on a tighter budget, there's also the HP Pavilion X360 which comes in a 13 inch and 11 inch. You can also check out my full review on the 11 inch version. This completes my full review on the all new HP Envy X360. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.